Okay, I'm recording. I saved your reach soul. Um, my name is Jackie Miller. I'm a teacher at the Pine Arts Magnet School in Lowell. And one of the reasons why I decided to go to Cambodia was uh, I've been working with Master Yari Levan for the past six years uh, at the school, and he has been coming in to work with my students. And I met Yari seven years ago through March Rack, and now I consider him not just someone who's been working with my kids, but as a, as a friend. So after writing grants to so the Mass Cultural Council, local cultural council to bring Yari in, I decided, and then Yari and I also partnered through a National Endowment of the Arts grant through Middlesex Community College, Marge and I, and Donna, and, and Paul I had uh, started to develop some courses, um, some workshops for teachers in Lowell to be able to come in and learn more about the arts in Cambodia and also about music in Cambodia, which Rita will talk to later. And so I decided the next step for me is to go because here I am doing the research, you know, teaching, and I need to experience the culture. So that was one of the reasons why I really felt led to go to be more instrumental in teaching my students and teaching um, about Cambodia. So um, one thing that we've been focusing on is authentic uh, Khmer designs. And my original project was to go to Cambodia and see the actual carvings and symbols and designs done on temple walls. And as most people have said, you go with one idea and it morphs into something totally different or more or whatever, so it's always changing. So my students did start by working on um, some different designs, original designs for the, from the um, temples. So this is actually uh, eighth, this is, no, this is seventh grade. I work with pre-K to eight, and my third through eighth grade this year is working with Yari. Yari's work with my kindergarten, so almost all my kids know Yari now. He's a celebrity in our building. So he comes in, he gets applauded. Um, people wave to him like he's a big superstar. So it's, it's just been kind of nice to have that interaction with him. So I'm gonna close up with the designs. So um, as I said, Yari has been working with my students. This is grade four. And um, we've been focusing on two types of junk flowers. This is gonna be a common theme between Marge and Joe and I is, um, and also I think that um, Lynn probably talked to this too, the junk flower and its symbolism. Uh, also, my kids have done research in the past how it relates to more of a decorative form of the lotus flower and how the lotus flower changes meaning depending on countries in Southeast Asia. So my social studies group, I teach social studies also, has also gone into to, to doing um, research on that. But Yari actually is committed to the decorative form of the Jun flower. Um, my kids all know how to say Jumipsul now, and they know, know what a Jun flower is. And so here's some of my fourth graders who are working with Yari. He actually worked on doing symmetry with them, that a lot of this is done symmetrically. So they know that. Here's some of the drawings that, that uh, Yari had done for the kids to see. And there's Yari working. Now, this student here, um, Cameron is obviously from Cambodia, and one of the things he said was, um, I'm Cambodian, no one in my family has ever shown me how to draw a junk flower. <laughs> so, um, it, you know, as I said, those connections that we make. Um, I've had kids, and six, a sixth grade student who's from Cambodia actually share a story one day um, about his grandfather um, survived in the Khmer Rouge. So it opens doors, as people have been saying throughout all the different presentations, that priceless and encounters that never would have happened otherwise. Um, I had a student tell me a, a few years back that um, as we worked at the kiln with Yari about his father and mother fleeing Cambodia through Thailand, or the Philippines, Thailand, then the United States, and how his mother um, actually, um, her, his father was actually in, uh, basically a result of being, um, being assaulted by a, a military um, Khmer Rouge soldier and the mother still kept him, and so just that whole story of them surviving and his father being honest with him was pretty, was pretty amazing. So just some of my students transferring the, the drawings I did to clay, and some of the results for fourth grade, um, John Flower. So these were actually to take home. Um, these students did two forms, the diamond and the square, and the diamond-shaped ones are, this is where we kind of come in to more, uh, what we're going to do community-wise. We've been working with the um, with Clemente Park, the Cambodian um, Cultural Center, the actual building, of ornating it. 
um, through the grant money. So we are going to be putting this time, last year was mosaics, this year is going to be the diamond-shaped junk flower that's going to be put onto the um, building. So eventually the building will be covered with tiles that are influenced by Kamai design and also um, by, done by the students. So um, we worked on, we moved on to work with some of the older kids as eighth grader and Yari worked one-on-one -on -one with a lot of them, grade seven. And then so here we go with the diamond-shaped junk flower. Here's some of the results of those. I just kind of want to show you though, um, the, the slides never do it justice. So, this is some of the ones that were done. Um, I mean, this one is just, I love this one. So he let them really experiment with texture and design. Um, I told them that rainbows and hearts, I didn't see any of those on the temple, so we can't be doing those on any of the tiles. I don't remember those hearts, but I didn't see any in all the temples I went to. So basically trying to keep them to the authentic designs was important. Um, especially since they're going on the cultural assistance center and people that are Cambodian in the community are gonna see that. So this is actually last uh, May, but just to let you know, the kids actually mixed uh, mortar and they actually uh, installed the tiles themselves with Yari. So that was a great, they're asking me to go back again this year. And one of the girls said, this is hard work, but it's the best day ever. You know, she just loved it. So these are all the kids organizing and um, putting the tiles on the building. And this is a group of students that, um, as you can see, Lowell is such a diverse population. So, um, you know, we have some, a couple of Cambodians, so, but these girls here are, um, are refugees from Burma, um, Iraq, Iran. So it just kind of crosses all different cultures. And this girl here is from um, Haiti. So just, she was the one that made that comment, how much she loved doing. Now Yari also came in and does demonstrations and shows the kids how to work on the wheel. Okay. And then also um, Yari is, this is my daughter. So <laughs> <laughs> um, she has been begging for two years to come and work on the, at the wood burning kiln. So it just, you know, just the whole experience is, is basically kind of filtering down to all different ages and generations. Um, so she came and we worked uh, at the kiln in February with Yari. We came out and spent four to five hours working, loading the kiln. I mean, not loading, but firing the kiln that day. So um, that's just an example of the, um, of the kiln firing. And my kids have come and seen this. They've been part of cleaning up the site. They've been part of um, ornating the site, um, putting flowers in and stuff. So they've done all that. So, and there's just some of the wares of Yari's work that's come out of the kiln. So then, actually, so then Rita and I decided to collaborate also to kind of s further spread out our experiences in Cambodia and to, to the Girl Scouts. So my daughter's a Girl Scout, so because World Thinking Day is usually focused around another culture, it just kind of worked out naturally that I would be the one to present this year with the girls. So Rita came in and taught them um, Cambodian dances. So they presented um, to all the Girl Scout troops in our region. So, uh, so it spread out to even more to other girls, um, not just you know, the school department, but to um, other uh, communities and um, towns. So Rita, this is Rita, and this is the girls at the actual presentation um, doing, the, my daughter presented the 10 top things you didn't know about Cambodia. One of them was Cambodia has never had a McDonald's and never will. Um, they have the equal of a Lucky Burger. And also that 50% of the population in Cambodia is under the age of 15. So that was a pretty, you know, sobering thought. And I just, I brought also, was able to bring back, like um, Janet talked about the silk and the belts. They were so excited about having um, this girl the dance for her guests that night at home after she had done it for the Girl Scout troop. So the next step for me is continuing this, the ornating of the uh, building, which we're in process of doing now. And also, um, Yari, uh, well, it's kind of more Donna's idea, but she kind of came up with thinking about what can we do next. Yari's gonna be putting together, you already came up with some designs to do an adult coloring book. 
Um, he has three drawings so far, and the proceeds to the book will actually go towards a cause. One of the things that I, um, I got a video from Donna on the women's garment factory and the women that come in from the towns to work in these factories like we spoke about, um, and just some of them trying to get out of that and, and kind of have their own businesses. And So I'm not quite sure where the proceeds are gonna go yet, but they will go to some um, organization in Cambodia to help with that effort.